So the first thing that we got to get into here is viewing our rosters not so much as a lineup to be perfected or, you know, um, delving into my wide receiver depth and developing the perfect room that's going to carry me through the season, but rather viewing our dynasty squads as a summation of value, essentially. So if you have followed along with any of the content I've been putting out this offseason, you know that I've also put out my dynasty ranks that are available in the JWB Patreon to Patreon subscribers. And in those ranks, I kind of equate all players to a certain number of firsts and seconds, uh, future firsts, future seconds, and kind of give their uh, equivalent dynasty value in my eyes that way. And so that's just a way that I tier players and kind of present them and assign them a sort of value on my roster. So what we're trying to do in Dynasty pretty much at all times and the way that I view my Dynasty rosters is I'm trying to build the most value on my roster at any time. And what higher value does for you is you can always buy production with high value. So building the value is really, especially in the off season, right, what we should be looking to do because the value is what's going to translate into the season and allow us to buy the production that we need and to bring home those championships that we're looking for. So really de-emphasize building a starting lineup. A lot of people, um, when they're building their dynasty roster, when they're doing their startup, they're looking at that lineup and thinking, oh man, my wide receiver three slot in this league is looking pretty thin. I got to go out and I got to acquire a wide receiver three to fill that slot so that my starting lineup, when I look at the team and sleeper, it makes me feel good. That's not what we're about. That's not what we're trying to do, especially not in the off season. We're trying to build value uh, by making good trades, good astute trades, and we're trying to also avoid losing value on our teams. The way I like to think about it is this. We get more information in the first two weeks of the NFL season than we do all off season. The first two weeks of the NFL season will drastically change player values. They may not change on people's boards, on their dynasty rankings that they publish, but after two weeks, people their perceptions of players will absolutely change and the deals that you could have gotten done before will not be in place anymore. Other people, if if the rookie wide receiver has a show out game in the first two weeks, then they're absolutely going to be almost untouchable, right? They're going to be the next Jamar Chase. Nobody will ever think of trading them away. So with that knowledge, what we should be trying to do in the off season is more so a a floor play of safeguarding the value that we have on our rosters. We want to avoid destruction of value. That should be pretty much our primary aim. And how do we do this? We do this by trading to place more of the team's overall value in the safest assets possible. So obviously, before the start of the season, you have to have a team that can actually... um, fill out all the positions. You can't just trade everything into picks and and expect to have a team that'll actually uh, compete or give you some idea of where you stand in the league. But what we can do is we can try to uh, manipulate our rosters, manipulate the players on our teams in a manner that we have the safest roster construction going into the season possible. We avoid the destruction of value while simultaneously giving ourselves the opportunity for that value to increase. And then once we get into the season, once we have those first few weeks of data, now we have a much better idea of what we want to do with the team, of you know if there are sell highs on our team that we can move off of early in the season, plenty of things like this. We can really kind of make a much more informed decision about what to do with the team after a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks should not make or break your season. It shouldn't make you think that, um, you know, your original assessment of the team was totally out to lunch. But it can definitely give you a lot of information and a really good leverage point in which to kind of flip the script, make astute trades, gain a lot of value in those first two weeks. And... What you can do if you're carrying assets that are really uh, susceptible to value changes is you can also experience the opposite effect where you lose a lot of value because, uh, you know, your older running back doesn't produce for the first two weeks and now he's just worthless in the market or he sees a lower snap share than you're anticipating. You're anticipating that you would have some massive workload 
uh, and suddenly he doesn't have that workload in the first two weeks for whatever reason, and now that asset is just completely tanked in everyone's eyes, and he's basically unmovable at that point. So that's what we're trying to avoid. And 